right, so earnings season here is in full swing this Halloween with some of the biggest tech companies showing mixed results. Joining us now is Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Melissa, always great to have you on. Let's start with Apple. To start, Apple posting a 54% growth in wearables and says customers are increasingly interested, of course, in health tech. So how do you see the company performing as it enters the services industry specifically? Well, we'll have to see what happens here with this. I'm a, even though the stock's up, it's up this morning, gapped up, I have to tell you, this is a lackluster reaction to what you would normally think would be a very bullish reaction to what they reported last night in the earnings call. I mean, we're up, but we're not up a lot. I mean, we... we we are not even making new highs in Apple. And I said, listen, you know, based on that call and the results, we should be at 250. And right now Apple's falling today. So Apple normally has a huge reaction either way, up or down on their earnings. This is a lackluster reaction today. In fact, if you didn't even know that they had earnings, you might look at this chart today. Again, I look at technicals and say, it just looks like a normal day for Apple. I mean, it's really not having a big bullish reaction. Now it could follow through into next week, but typically the day after earnings, we see a big reaction. It's that this stock has to hit over 250 today and make new highs, and it's not done it right now yet so far this morning. Yeah, Melissa, that's a great point. I would expect there is some trepidation heading in tomorrow, the launch of Apple TV Plus, limited original content on this, not a library of content really at all, uh, and just bad reviews. I mean, outright bad reviews for the morning show and its thriller called C. Do you think investors uh, might be just proceeding cautiously into tomorrow. Well, Apple has to go into this environment. They're doing it. They want to compete with the Netflixes of the world. They want to compete with Hulu. Apple has to do what they're doing. Whether or not it's a hit right out of the gate or not remains to be seen. But you know what? The viewers are going to decide. They haven't. They have. No one's been watching the show yet. People have had previews. But let's see what happens. People may like it more than expected. They had to go into this realm. And I believe, and even if it doesn't, if, even if it's not a hit right out of the gate, They'll make improvements. Apple knows how to do that. Apple's pretty much good at everything they do, quite frankly. As we do look ahead to this streaming service, there are discussions among investors of Apple potentially offering their hardware and also services more in a bundled fashion, in a subscription fashion. Do you think that's a good idea for Apple to have more of this recurring revenue stream? And, and do you think they're actually going to do that? I think that they're going to look at that in the future as they make improvements to Apple TV and their programming. They've got to get more shows. For people to want to do that, they need popular shows, kind of like Netflix. So they need more popularity in the shows. They need to make improvements, like I said, and then people will want to pay the money and will want to subscribe. Of course, it's a great revenue stream, so eventually they're probably going to do it. Whether that happens by 2020 or not depends on how many new shows they're going to create. This is about content. Everyone is out there competing for content. Uh, you guys, this is content. Everyone wants more, 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 and wherever where they can get it. And obviously the visuals on people's phones are the best. And original content too. I mean, that's where we yeah. see certainly the puck, puck heading. Uh, let's talk Facebook. That stock actually seen a nice pop today, Melissa, up 4%, though still uh, quite a bit off its all time high of 208 dollars a share. Is this the type of momentum where you're seeing active buyers uh, come into the stock at, at, decent, at decent liquidity and high volume? I will tell you that I love Facebook more than any other earnings so far today and actually this week. And here's why. Twitter is no longer going to be doing political ads. And guess what? People are going to be doing ads on Facebook for the 2020 election, Facebook is going to take that ad revenue. People are going to throw all their money that they were going to spend into Twitter. They're going to throw it into Facebook ads. Facebook already has a lot of revenue from ads. This stock today is a buy. I like it at 200. This is 208 is when you look at the stock and the way the stock can move when it gets the momentum and the mojo under it. Here, we're going to we're going to go over 197 any second again. This stock could hit up to 208, 210, lickety split, even by January 1. This Facebook, now that Twitter has decided to stop uh, running political ads, Facebook is going to go out there and get all that ad revenue, and this stock is going to skyrocket. Hmm. But, but Melissa, I, I'm going to push back on that a little bit because the political ad revenue is such a small percentage of Facebook's revenue overall, and then having Jack Dorsey come out and saying, or criticizing Facebook, not outright saying Facebook, but criticizing it, maybe not so good from a PR perspective, and Zuckerberg having defend, to defend Facebook's policy on the earnings call as well. 
But I'm telling you, it may have been low, but it's going to increase. That's what I'm saying. Because Twitter's dropping doing the ads, even though it was a small percentage before, it's going to, they're going to get an increase on that now. And they already have ad revenue coming in. Even though the political side of it was not as big of a piece, it's going to increase because of Twitter. I don't, Facebook is, is I will say one thing. Mark Zuckerberg is 100% focused on making money for the company, and that's a good thing. You can look at it and say, well, the politics of it, the difference between right and wrong. He's focused on making money for the shareholders, and in, in that regard, I've got to tell you, he's done a good job. I, I think that is right. We, we have seen Jack Dorsey, Melissa, take more of a sort of um, cultural approach, obviously, at times, but making Twitter, uh, putting Twitter right in the center of conversation or trying to do that at least. Let's pivot and talk about Lyft a little bit, right? Those shares on the move, they're actually higher uh, after trying to allay some investor concerns that it might be close to a path to profitability. Were you buying it? No, I think the stock looks horrible and it's looked horrible for quite a long time. And it's interesting because one of these days, I think one of these companies, and it might be Lyft, may get scooped up and bought from an Uber or some other company. It's almost like there's just too much competition out there now by these by these same types of places. And this stock has not done a good job. I mean, if you look at it since the since the IPO came out, this this again has been another one that has just been totally bombed and been lackluster. I mean, why would you buy this here? This is right off almost all time lows. I know it gapped up, but again, it closed yesterday, last night. This is hardly up at all. It closed at 44.11. It's trading 70 cents above that right now. This stock is in a downtrend. I would not buy this. It's probably lower. It's lower right now. Even today, it's falling. Even if the market rallies, I wouldn't buy this. I, I, you couldn't talk me into buying this. <laughs> Melissa, want to get your take on Starbucks as well before we let you go. Revenue beating on expectations. Global same store sales also beating expectations. What is the future here for Starbucks? Are you optimistic? Starbucks, it's interesting because you want to look at the overall economy and the market and things that are going on politically right now, and, and especially with the numbers you've been seeing on the economic side, people are still spending as much money as it costs to buy a Starbucks coffee. So you say, all right, well, how are consumers doing? They're doing pretty good because if they're going to go out and spend what it costs to get a, a, a coffee at Starbucks, then people are fine with spending money. And you're seeing that. People are unemployed. You're seeing the market rally. I like the Starbucks earning. We'll see if it flips around today. It's falling right now. But overall, long term, Starbucks is in an uptrend. And I think it, it, it just reiterates the fact that consumer confidence right now, now is high because people are going out and spending money on Starbucks coffee, which they absolutely do not need to do, but they like it. It's a luxury and people are paying for it. All right. That's Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Melissa, thanks as always for your time. Thanks. Have a good day.